So when you have back pain and you are wanting to do a forward folding practice for whatever reason, it could be nothing to do with your back, but you want to just nurture your back while you're at it. Um, forward folding practices can be a little bit difficult at times. So this, you know, the, the vertebrae have these discs in between. And if you, you know, anytime you're folding forward or backward, you might have this compression happen if you're not able to kind of keep lots of good disc space in between the vertebrae. Um, so for a fair number of people, four bends can be a little aggravating. So when we do them today, um, Try to think about your core as being, you know, that 360 cylinder of support to help you stabilize, to keep that space in between each vertebrae so that when you bend forward, you're really doing it from this giant, big, open spaciousness instead of just slumping down. One of the gifts of forward folds, besides um, for some people, it can help um, the back. Uh, actually, I've been, hold on, let me read what, um, okay. Uh, good. I'm glad to hear that, um, Ruth. Thanks for saying that four bends don't seem to hurt when you have low back and QL problems. So your QL is one of your main low back muscles, um, and it, it you can stretch it by forward folding, but you can also stretch it by laterally bending. Um, so we'll do a little bit of both in our practice today for sure. Um, but one of the other, there's a couple other things I want to say about forward bending. First of all. Um, opening up the whole back line of the body is really important. You know, a lot of times we're not just very aware of what's happening in the back of us. It's a less aware part of our body. We can't see it. We can't touch it as much. So it's really uh, good to do some work to open it up. And remember that the back line, you know, fascially starts at your eyebrows, comes over your head, down the whole back line of the body to the bottom of the feet. So when you do a forward fold, try to think of the, the global body instead of just one segment of your back stretching or just your hamstring stretching, but feeling that you can really open up the full line. And then the other thing that can happen so beautifully when we do forward folds is there's this deep introspection that happens. You know, when we when we fold in on ourselves, there's a lot of um, mind softening. There's a lot of nervous system relaxation. There's a lot of parasympathetic drive that can be stimulated from that softening into the inner places. I always think about, you know, ferns and how they kind of are coiled before they before they open up. And a lot of times we need this nurturing space of of child's pose and you know things that kind of turn us in on ourselves to help us um, nurture the inner world. Um, and then at the same time, just like back that our um, four bends can be good or bad for your back, depending on what's happening and who you are. Sometimes forward folds can be good or bad for your state of the nervous system. And I don't mean bad, but it may not be the best. So for some people who struggle with um, nervous system depletion in the sense where um, you, you kind of are, are apathetic and, and very um, unmotivated and, and feel that sense of immobilization, um, disassociation. Well, maybe not disassociation, but immobilization. Sometimes forward folds can kind of, it's, it's good, but sometimes we need a little bit of this to help us kind of get our giddy up up and, and out of them. So um, know that if you are the type of person that tends to um, kind of get it, it toward inertia when you're not feeling well mentally, um, that forward folds can be very nurturing and very soothing, but they may not, not be exactly what you need if you need something that's going to pull some spark and um, brightness into your body, which would be more restorative back bends that I would recommend for that. So, you know, the, everything, you know, this is what's so beautiful about yoga is that usually within one practice, we do a little bit of everything. You know, we open our bodies this way, we open our bodies this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And we, we have a fluidity of fullness. Um, but whenever you are struggling with something in particular, always know that your yogic practices can can be kind of guided in one direction or another to support whatever the well-being that you need right now. Um, okay, uh, and then the last thing I'll just say is the four bends can be particularly good if you're struggling with anxiety. So, you know, that, that depression, anxiety thing that can happen simultaneously, but if anxiety is really what you struggle with, sometimes that, that internal space of 
of calm and curling in, if you're able to, can be very helpful. So again, it's your body, it's your mind, it's your spirit, it's your practice. So try to learn what works for you so that you know what to reach for when you need something particular in your mind or body. All right, so let's sit up straight and tall. Enough talking. I'm always talking, talking too much. All right, so um, just take a moment to move towards stillness and quiet. As you drop in, see what it feels like to nurture your breath. And that can mean lots of different things, but just at first, Pay attention to how you are breathing. How does the breath feel? Have you noticed a breath yet today? Or is this the first time you're kind of coming home to the sensation of breath? Rest your eyes behind their lids. Soften all around your skull. Breathe deeply. And allow your shoulders to relax. Feel the grounding of your pelvis. And imagine that you can take a little bike pump and inflate up your discs. Give them a little juice so that you have soft cushions between each vertebrae. And see if you can feel that spaciousness between each vertebrae. Sense in your body. Let's return to the awareness of the breath and take a big deep one. Hands together at your heart and bow in. And notice even just the bowing of the head, the resting, the forehead, the third eye kind of softening down and in. What kind of uh, impact that has on your thinking, on your mental energy? on your physical energy. Offer an intention here. And then release the hands. Okay, let's find our way to our back. And as you lie down, and of course the entire practice will be all forward bending, um, but we have, um, uh, we'll have a little emphasis there today. Okay, so reach and stretch and lengthen. Okay, right side and left side. And you know, get your body to wake up a little bit. Feel a little bit of a back bend in your spine so that you can kind of squeeze the back body just ever so slightly. Like a yawn for the spine. And bring your knees into your chest and feel your back relax on the ground. Okay, rock a little bit. Swing from side to side. And then let's circle the knees. Rolling in one direction, rolling in another. Let's pull the knees away from the midline and bring them back in. Enjoy the mobility of your hips. Okay, right knee into your chest, left leg on the ground, and feel a good squeeze of that knee into your um, body. And let's roll around in your ankles, wiggle your toes, get your feet to wake up. Notice if your head wants to lift, rest your head, rest your shoulders. Start to feel that sense of being able to surrender in one part of the body while you're um, 
you know, almost like a split focus or a broad focus, not a split focus, but a broad focus. Of paying attention to places you want to rest as well as places you want to engage. Left knee comes in right leg and long on the ground. And as you give a good squeeze toward your body, rest your head down and relax your shoulders. Maybe even interlace your fingers the other way so you get a, a little bit of uh, sensation there. Rolling your toes, rolling your ankles if it feels good. Nice heavy head. And then spring out to a star on the ground, spread out your bones, wiggle your fingers and toes and feel what's out there, out there in space as far as you can get away from your midline, from your center, and then come toward your center, knees into your chest, pick up your head. Again, one more time. Expanding, open, finding that freedom. Exhale, knees drawn in, relax. Rest your head down, keep your knees tucked in. And let's start by holding behind your knees. So we're moving toward happy baby pose. But first just wrap, either put your hands behind your knees or wrap your forearms um, behind your knees. Wide legs, okay? So draw your knees to the outside of your ribs instead of close in toward your sternum. And then go a little deeper, grab onto your feet and see what that deep um, uh, compression in the hips feels like, but also feel the low back start to open up a little bit. Spread out the bones of your feet, push up toward your hands, hands down toward your feet. Okay. All right, relax out to a star, spread your wings, exhale, knees into your chest, head comes up. Let's roll to your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. So as you find all fours, um, such a good place to uh, start a practice to be in cat cow, letting your spine kind of find movement in all directions. So tail lifts, crown lifts, feel that back bend in the body and round the spine. Feel your shoulder blades spread open away from each other, tail drops, head drops. Back and forth you go. See if you can ripple one spine, at one vertebrae at a time, like a wave, you know, where you really can slowly articulate each vertebrae so you can feel um, what's happening. Which, you know, do you have some spots that are a little tender that you need to sure up a little bit? How's your breath? And then Let's go ahead and ground your hands. We're going to rock our hips all the way over to the right, as far as we can get them while still being on our hands and knees. And then back center, then shift your weight, the hips all the way over to the left, as far as you can go while still being um, weighted through both hands. Back to center, move the spine around any way you want. So you can swirl in your spine, you can Move your pelvis in some circles, feel your rib cage move around, your head, kind of loosen up all sorts of little um, tight spots of fascia, and then back towards child's pose. Walk the hands forward enough where you feel a stretch through your shoulders. Let your forehead rest on the ground, and if you can't, try maybe the knees a little wider or try a block under your head so you really feel that connection of resting your forehead down on the foot. All right, let your breath travel down your spine. Try to find the breath like a bubble um, deep in the water that's rising up underneath your spine. So imagine a, a spray of bubbles on the anterior surface of your vertebrae as you breathe, kind of rolling down the front of your spine all the way to your sacrum. And back again. Head is heavy, let your neck relax. All right, let's walk the hands over to one side or the other, feeling the side body start to open up and stretch. Relax your skull, drop some weight into your hips. Inch over to the other side. 
Feel the rib cage open, drop some weight into the pelvis. Breathe deeply. All right, come back to center, up onto all fours. Let the spine move around a little bit, maybe wag your tail, see what feels good. Inhale, right arm up in the air, find a twist. Exhale and bring that arm through. Notice the vertebrae here. See if you can still plump up those disc spaces. Let the brain rest. Let the eyes turn down toward the ground. Soften the base of the skull. Finding breath. And come on out of there. Reach that arm back up in the air. Hand comes down onto the ground. Second side, arm lifting high. Exhale, slide that arm under, gaze toward the ground. Let the base of the skull relax, feeling the twist in your spine, breathing well. And then inhale, reach that arm back up in the air, hand down onto the ground, dog pose, lift up. Let's go ahead and start pedaling our feet. So we're waking up a little bit more fullness in that back end of the body now. So dropping one heel all the way down to the ground as the other knee bends. You can move quickly through this and just have a few passes. Well, and then after, you know, kind of moving back from one heel to the other heel, warming up some of that deep, thick fascia of your Achilles. Lots of strong connective tissue in those tendons. And now let's try this hanging out there. So drop your right heel down toward the ground, all the way toward the ground. Spread your toes, bend your other knee, and see if you can anchor the heel and then lift up into your sick bone. Okay, let's change sides. Drop your left heel, bend your right knee. Feel the roots of that heel and then lift up toward your sit bones. Root down to rise up. And then take both feet. And even if you typically um, lift your heels pretty high, let's see what it feels like to bend your knees and drop your heels lower toward the ground. Push off your hands, sternum lengthening, try not to round the back. Okay, walk your feet forward. We're going to come to a low squat for a moment. Okay, so drop your heels down to the ground, even if that means you need to kind of lean forward a little bit on your hands and then drop your heels toward the ground. Just see what it feels like to have, um, this will stretch your, your soleus muscle a little bit more, your solea. So you have two muscle, big muscles in your calf. You have your gastrocnemius, which is like that thick one that we see in the back of our calf. And then underneath that, you have a muscle called your soleus, and this will stretch your soleus. So rock forward a little bit, put your hands on the ground, and go ahead and just rock back and forth toward your heels and then away, letting a little bit different feeling happen along the Achilles. Go ahead and lift your hips. Go ahead and heel toe your feet in. If they turned out, bend your knees forward fold. Relax your head. And inhale for a halfway lift. Spine is getting very spacious now. Legs straighten. Exhale, bend your knees and let your head relax. Rise all the way up. If you're dizzy, squeeze to the midline. Reach your arms to the sky, feel a lift of the heart to open your chest, lean back a little bit. All right, let's spread open the wings, cactus your arms, find your back body, give it a good squeeze back there, okay. and then reach up. Let's do that twice more. Imagine that you're pulling a bar down, and so you have a little effort as you come to a cactus and feel the back body Hug a little bit, feel all those muscles engage. One more time, lifting your arms up. And then as you exhale, squeeze the muscles along your spine, in between your shoulder blades, and then relax your hands down. Shake out your hands, interlace your fingers behind your back, open up the heart. 
All right, so lift your sternum toward the sky, spread your collarbones. Again, squeeze the shoulder blades, hug them toward the spine. And then we're gonna bend our knees and lift our arms away from our back. Okay, gobble your head, let it rest and relax, opening up the fronts of your shoulders. And then relax and melt your hands down toward the ground. Gobble your head, bend your knees as much as you need, wag your tail. Inhale for a halfway lift. If you have blocks, grab them and put your hands on the high height of blocks. So there's all this space in your vertebrae. Spread open the bones of your feet. Let's uh, start, you know, just being very aware of our feet as part of this back line chain. Spread your bones, feel the bottom of your feet. See if you can lift the band of your arches, like you had a strap around your arches, lifting up, up toward your inner thighs and also the outer arch, lifting up toward your outer hips. So feel the arches lift and then ground the four points of your foot. Good, so that's your root to rise here. See if you can open up the backs of the knees without hyper extending, especially if you're very mobile. You don't wanna slam your knees back, but have that sense of spreading the backs of the knees, spreading the calves, spreading the hamstrings. And then exhale and fold forward and let your neck relax. Let your knees soften and bend. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Pull your chin toward your chest. Feel the muscles along your spine open up. Inhale for a halfway lift again. Fold forward. Step your left foot back. Right foot's in front. Come to a lunge. Extending the spine and feel your hip flexors open a little bit. Drop your back knee onto the ground. Feel the front line of your body open up from your back knee all the way to your heart. See if you can feel that open space. Okay. And then go ahead and bring your hands forward on the blocks. Lift your back knee up off the ground and let's begin to bend and straighten that front knee. It's kind of doing some nerve glides for that sciatic nerve. Breathing well. Lunging your legs, ground, rise up, crescent lunge. Arms coming up and see if you can lift your ribs off your pelvis without having your shoulders creep so much up toward your ears. Drop the shoulder, like in between the shoulder blades, let it slide down a little bit, like a waterfall from the base of your skull to your tail. Extend upward through your side bodies. Try not to compress your lumbar spine. Use your core to help you. And then release the hands, back foot comes forward, fold. Let the fold be deep, soften your skull. A halfway lift, hands on blocks. Extend your thigh bones back, straighten your legs. Right at the root of your thighs, draw back. Feel the arches, feel the four points of your feet. Melt and fold, knees soften, relax. Step your right foot back. Left foot is now in front, coming to a lunge. Let's place our back knee on the ground. You can keep your hands on your blocks or you can lift them up onto your knee if you want. But just feel that full front line from your knee to your heart, lifting and opening. Notice your spine. So are you sinking? Are you compressing? See if you can feel that bike pump kind of inflate those discs again. And then release your torso forward a little bit. Lift your back knee up off the ground. And let's begin to bend and straighten the front knee. You can lift your toes off off the ground or keep them planted. See what works best for your body. Come into your breath. When you straighten your legs, see what it might feel like to bow your head. Rest your skull downward.
lunge again. Feel your roots coming up, rising high. Again, we want to not compress our low back. So try not to sink and fall. Rise out of the pelvis. Reach your ribs off your hips. See when your arms lengthen upward, if you can still feel that softness descending from your base of skull to your tail. Use your core to support all this. So it's not a coreless pose. It's a very core engaged pose. Release the hands to the ground, back to dog pose. Okay, so here we are again. If you wanna pedal a little bit, you can. Maybe the pose feels a little bit more open and free than it did before. Hug your hands toward each other a little bit so you support your shoulders by using some of your side body muscles, your lats, your serratus. From here, lift your sit bones and descend your heels. Feel the back line of your legs open up. Spread the bones of your feet. Heart lifting toward your pelvis so the spine gets long too. Come forward into a plank. Find that sense of nothing's really stretching now. We don't have that extension feeling, but we have a condensement feeling, a sense of sturdy, stable, hugging in toward the center. Find your core. See how much um, that kind of compression around your core can stabilize your spine. Lower yourself down. You can put your knees first if your shoulders need help. Roll the shoulders a couple times. Feel that your shoulder blades are mobile. Inhale, cobra pose. Chest opens. Exhale, and lower back down. Choose how you want the next one to be. Your arms can be wide, your hands can be off the ground, whatever back then feels really good in the body. And then relax here. Okay, take your arms to a cactus, but instead of your elbows straight out from your shoulders, drop your elbows a little lower toward your hips. So you kind of form like the letter W with your arms. Okay. We're gonna take a deep breath in. And we're gonna lift upper body only first. Feel the muscles, draw the shoulder blade tips down toward the pelvis, engage your core. Feel all the muscles of your back move and work, and then relax. Okay, we're gonna add the legs. So let's see if you can feel that full back line. Inhale, lift everything up off the ground. Feel the elbows hug down toward the hips. Feel the muscles along your spine. Feel your glutes and your hamstrings. And then relax and release. Come up on tall fours and let your spine wag about, okay? So you can um, sway your hips. You can circle through your ribs or pelvis. Try to release any tension in the back body from those back bends. And come back towards child's pose when you're ready. Okay. Let your back open up. So it's such a unique thing when our knees are bent and our hips are bent, we can really emphasize the openness of the back. Find that bubble breath along your spine again. Okay, spread out your hands, curl your toes, lengthen through your spine. Breathe, dog pose. Let's lift the right leg up in the air and bring that foot forward. Your stance is shorter um, than even a lunge. Okay, so first of all, the legs, hands on blocks. Square your hips, your feet are hip width apart. Drop weight into your right big toe and reach your right hip back. Extend the spine. Feeling your breath. To rise all the way up. So um, just like we did, we created a little work along the back line of the body in the back then, let's create a little bit of work in the back line of the body here. So hands on hips, lengthen upward through your spine. And as you reach forward, let the emphasis be on creating all that long space 
in your spine. Support with your core. Ground into your feet and let your hamstring have the balancing act of both engagement, flexion, you know, trying to support and also opening up and stretching. So we've got that flex stretch in the front leg. Use your core, extend your spine. Come back up, back foot comes forward, front foot comes back. All right, extend through your spine, feel the puffiness of your discs. Root down through your left big toe, extend upward, and we're going to come forward here. Just to, you know, you don't have to go very far to start feeling that flex stretch in the back of your leg. So your glutes and your hamstrings are both um, flexing and extending at the same time, contracting and lengthening at the same time. Root your feet, engage your core, lengthen your spine, go as low as your body can support this action. Lift on up, two arms to the sky, and then reach your arms down and rest your hands on the block. So we're a little bit more passive in stretching mode here. There's not as much flexion or contraction that has to happen, but see if you can still root your whole right foot and drag your right heel back a little bit so that you have that sense of support along your hamstring. Sometimes when we're working to open up the back line of the body, um, the hamstrings can, you can easily overstretch places. So let's be very mindful that having a little bit of that contraction within there is very protective. Okay, right, let's walk the back foot forward. Hold, bring your toes to touch or maybe stick a block between your thighs, however you wanna come into chair pose. Sink your pelvis down a little bit, reach the arms up, find that extension. Same, use your core to support your back. See what it feels like to have both working. Take a deep breath in, exhale, twisting to the right. Your hands can be out or you can keep your hand on your hip. Inhale, come back, exhale the other way. Breath in, come on up, straighten your legs, take that block out of there. Arms coming up, a little bit of engagement in the back body, open your chest, back bend, and then release your hands down. Step your left foot back, right foot is in front. We're finding a twist, a little deeper pose here now. So right arm is on your right hip, left arm to the sky. Feel the vertebrae lifting up off your pelvis. Legs are straight, stretch forward. Use that core support, use the hamstrings and glutes to support. Place your left hand down on a block. If you need two blocks, you can have one under the other. You can take your right foot out to the right more if you need to. Before you twist, square the hips. Okay, root down through the feet, extend the spine, Start engaging the core. Have that flex stretch of that front leg, hamstring and glutes. The spine is spacious. Start to twist with all those discs plumped up and finding support for your vertebrae. Use your core, exhale, and twist. So you're twisting on your breath out. Stay rooted in your feet. Keep that right hip hugging in. Shoulders away from the ears. The spine gets longer. Relax and bring your back foot forward. Hands on blocks, half lift. Feel the sit bones lift, feel the spine elongate. And let's step our right foot back. Come on up to stand. Our left foot is in front, our right foot is in back. You can take your left foot out to the left a little bit more, kind of find the stable place for your body. Left hand on hip, right arm in the air. Take a deep breath in, extend, feel all that length and space in your torso, reach forward, bring your hand down onto the block or blocks and have the support that you need so you're not sinking and shrinking your front body. 
You want to be long and spacious through your whole torso, through your spine, 360 around your spine. So we're not um, feeling a deep forward bend in this pose. Round your big, your left foot, the big toe mound. See if you can reach the left hip back. Find extension in your spine. Root the legs. Twist with your core on your exhale. So the core is engaged strongly in this pose. Keep your left hip hugged in instead of letting it push out to the side. Keep the length of your spine growing. Twist on your breath out. Stay rooted in your feet. Do you have preference? Do you like twisting this way more or less than the other side? Pay attention to those subtle little things in our body. They come out of the pose, back foot comes forward, a halfway lift. Now arch your back a little bit, lift your tail, feel your chest lift, maybe even pick up your head. And then release, bend your knees a lot. Okay. Come the, uh, hands down onto the ground and step back to a dog. Take your feet wide on the mat, spread open your hands and root down. Extend and lengthen through your body, heart lifting to hips. Find all the room you have. Come forward into a plank. Feel that stable, stable spine. Engage through your core. Find that security in the center body. Should feel good. And then lower yourself down to the ground. Sphinx pose, forearms underneath you, lengthen through your spine and open things up. Exhale and relax. Pick up your feet and windshield wiper your knees, left and right. Okay, lying down twist here. So Left knee comes up high toward your armpit. Feel the stretch in your hip, enjoy that. And when you're ready, your right arm comes over to the left and twist open. Breathe deeply, open your chest. Enjoy this pose. And back around. Change sides. Right knee lifting up. Stay low in your torso. Enjoy the hip stretch. Make sure your blocks are out of the way. Cross your left arm over to the right and twist open. Let your knee leave the floor. Enjoy the open chest. Breathe into the pecs. Adjust your arms or legs to your happiest place. and then come back around. We're gonna come on to our back. So lie down. We're going to do um, a active and then a, uh, later we're gonna do a passive bridge pose. We're just kind of countering as we go with some back bending vibes to make sure that your spine knows that it functions in two different directions, not just forward bending. Ground the four corners of your feet, lift up into a full bridge pose, okay? So your hands can interlace underneath you if you want, or your hands, your arms can be down at your sides, whatever feels good for your body. Let your neck be neutral. Round the four corners of your feet and feel the work along the back line of the body. Pull your heels toward your shoulders. Relax and melt toward the ground. I would show wiper your knees left and right. Rolling over onto your side. We'll do a couple of seated forward folds now. Pigeon pose, right leg is in front. If you need to do reverse pigeon, by all means. So you, you take your practice according to what your body's needs are every single moment. Okay, so there's no um, rules that you have to do something that is not good for you. So if pigeon pose is a bad pose for your knee or hip, then you do reverse pigeon pose. Extend through your spine, 
Now the key, once we get down here, is to rest your forehead. I want you to start feeling this nurturance of the forward folds that are supporting your head. Okay, so adjust your knee and ankle to be in the happy place for your joints. Once you get comfortable in this pose and have square hips and a wide sit bones and a spacious long spine, melt the shoulders and melt the skull. Let the head rest on a block. Breathe deeply. Back pose. Let's switch sides. So do what's right for you. Maybe reverse pigeon pose needs to be on this side, maybe not. Okay. Extend your spine no matter what you're doing. We're finding spinal extension and come to find the posture. So, you know, I have support, I have a blanket underneath my sit bone and my thigh. Um, if you're on the ground, just notice if you're kind of listing off to the left, see if you can square your hips, which might require support. Rest your head. Melt the shoulders, melt the jaw. Lift on out of there. Notice what's happening in your brain. If you're starting to slow the thinking down, if that support of the forehead, that forward folding is starting to work its magic, you're going to sit on the edge of a blanket. Okay. Grab a strap. And if you don't have a strap, you can always just put your hands on the ground, but straps are helpful. Janusha Left foot is bent, foot is against, or left knee is bent, foot is against your inner thigh of your right leg. Use a strap around your right foot so that you feel the extension of your spine. You know, so often when we try to reach our foot, we end up just collapsing. So first, find the extension, those puffed up vertebrae discs, okay, vertebral discs, lengthen from that uh, heart open space from that long spine space. That's what you bring forward over your leg. You try not to collapse. We're not shrinking, we're expanding. Once you get to a place where, okay, that's where I stretch, keep the long spine and bow the head. And if you want, you can grab a block and put it on your shin. Maybe you reach your forehead to the block. Maybe not. Maybe you're too far away for that. So whichever, whatever works for you. Sometimes it's nice to do this pose with your head on a chair. Then you can kind of bring your leg through a chair and rest in a forward fold. This is a big stretch for the quadratus lumborum on that left side. So feel into that. 
The legs are grounded, the spine is spacious, the head is resting, even if it's not on the block, we're melting the forehead and softening. Resist the urge to collapse. Toes pointing straight up, knee pointing straight up. And come back up. We're going to bring the leg out to the side. And reach up. You can hold the strap around your foot still. Extend the spine. Now we do a side stretch here. Imagine you have some weight, like a sandbag, on the top of your left thigh, the left side of your pelvis. Reach and extend from that place. So we're, again, we're finding the long spaciousness of the spine. Try not to collapse or sink. Back up, bring the leg forward, two knees into your chest for a moment, lift up through your spine, and then sit cross legged. I feel how that impacted your vertebrae. Do you need to do something differently? Are you okay? Remember that forward folds for some people is like, ah, that feels amazing. For some people, for their back, it's like, ooh, that was a little much. So check in with yourself, always check in and make sure you're not going too far and make sure you're going far enough. Wrap the strap around your left foot now. I feel into that extension of the spine, breathing deeply. Okay, we're not collapsing, we're expanding, we're opening and lengthening. And then as you stretch forward, flex your toes, engage your quadriceps, find that you know reciprocal inhibition where the the antagonist muscle group, if you engage, will help the other side open. So flexing your quad or engaging your quads will help your hamstrings open. Engaging your core to support. Feel the reach of the spine as far as you are able to go and then bow your head. We're not collapsing our belly, we're supporting with our core. on up and we're going to bring the leg out to the side wrap the strap around your foot adjust anything that needs adjusting and then stretch open into a side bend opening up that quadratus lumborum as well as you know a lot of the transverse abdominus fibers will open up here your leaks will open up feel the stretch Round down through your sit bones, through your pelvis, like you have a sandbag on your hip. Neck and shoulders are soft. Come back up. Again, bring your knees into your chest for a moment. Got one more to do. You can put the chin if you want, just let your back relax. Sit cross-legged, maybe cross the other way since you always sit that way and just pay attention. How's my back body? Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's uh, you can feel a little tenderness. So you always want to be very mindful of how far you're going in these poses. Wide legs, okay? So stretch your legs out, have the support of the blanket underneath you. Okay, just go where you, your body can go. You don't want to have over sensation at the inner knees or the sit bones. So let's try to get the belly of the muscles to feel where the stretch is. Okay, so you might need lots of blocks for this. You can kind of stack two blocks and then elbows and then forehead. So whatever you need to feel like you can fold forward in this pose safely. Remember, we're not overstretching. The goal is to not turn into um, you know, a stretch band. We want to have stability as we stretch. So engage your quads, femur bones down, engage your core, flex your feet, extend forward and rest on the block to whatever place your body needs. You can put your elbows and hands, whatever you need. 
Try not to collapse anywhere. We're grounded and expansive. Find your breath. With your forehead resting, if that's what's resting, can you feel the ease of that? Come back, cross-legged again. Feel your spine. Simple twist. Reach um, the right arm up. Left hand is behind you. Extend through your spine. Hand on your knee. Twisting to the side. Shoulders drop down away from the ears. Full breath. Come back up. Twist the other way. Back up. We're going to come down onto our back. Grab a block. And put your feet on the ground. Put a low block under your pelvis. Just a low one. You don't have to go high. I mean, if you want to go higher, by all means, go higher. You can have middle height or stack two blocks. But just let your spine kind of return to a neutral curve, especially if you know you um, somehow lost that extension a little bit when we were forward folding, which is very easy to do. Breathe well. If you want to stretch one leg out or both legs out or no legs out, keep your feet bent, your choice. Just find what you need right now to nourish your sacrum, your pelvis, your low back. We're all going to um, keep the block. You might need to adjust the block, you know, once you do this. We're going to bring our knees to our chest. A little bit of traction for your spine. And then lift your legs straight up in the air. And allow the weight, gravity to kind of take hold so that you're, you're kind of weighting your femur bone heads into the pelvis. So feel that weight drop down like a support system for your low back, like a weighted blanket for your pelvis and low back. Heavy head, relax your breath. You can stay there longer if your body really likes it. And we're going to prepare for Shavasana. There's so many things that might happen here. You might need something. You might need to do a pose. Um, you might feel like, oh, okay, now everything's relaxed. Oftentimes when you do some back, um, some deep core bending that we've done, it's difficult to lie flat. So if when you lie in Shavasana, if your back starts to talk to you, Support underneath your knees with some blankets or put your calves up on a chair. And you may need, not need that, but you might. So just see what feels good to you. And let's just take a moment to get comfortable. And of course, if there's other poses you need to do to kind of nourish your body and prepare for Shavasana, by all means, take your time moving into the restfulness, the end of your practice. And then once you are comfortable, kind of scan and make, make sure you can always have a little extra support with the blocks or the blankets underneath your knees if you need it. Mouth closed. Heavy head. Heavy wind.
a little bit and you plug in and you lift your fingers and toes. When you feel ready, go ahead and put your feet on the ground and let's just windshield wiper our knees. A few passes. Loosen up your back after lying down for a few minutes. to your side and push yourself up to sit. Take your time. Soften your mind. Bow your head slightly. Let that energetic forward fold happen where we get to turn in on ourselves. Every once in a while, allow yourself to curl like the fern so that when you're ready, you can open up too. Offer your practice and your energy. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.